Wow, this Terrence Gangster Williams, aka OG Giggity. It's 6.33 in the morning, y'all. You know, it's all wrong. Let me give y'all one. Remember this. Be careful how you treat a person no matter where you at. In prison, in the jailhouse, the parish jail for, for Louisiana and for the, everywhere else is the county. You got to be careful how you treat a person because you never know when you two will meet up again. Look what happened to me. In 1990, I got arrested with uh, my homeboy Money. He in Angola now. We got arrested for armed robbery and an aggravated battery. They gave a juvenile life. But back then, before you go up to LTI or, or, or Monroe to do your time, you used to go to this big old dorm called CYC. Or you would go to uh, the Youth Study or the St. Bernard Project app. Well, while, while I was in the, I was in the youth study first, then they moved me over to CYC. So while, while I'm in CYC, and I got a few uh, uh, homeboys that I met, you know, from the third world that I was sitting at the table with. So one in particular name was uh, Gingas. That was his name, Gingas. He could draw real good. And, you know, I like to clown and play a lot, so I guess I went too far with the clown and play, and he wanted to fight. So he's like, come on, man, let's go in the cut. Let's catch the cut. Like, come on, let's go catch the cut. But some of our homeboys like, nah, man, y'all, y'all, we not gonna let y'all do that. But he, he was one of them like arrogant, you know, cocky type of person. Like, you know, like always want you to speak to him first. You know, just sit there and just like, you know, he think it's all about him. You know, that's the type of person he was. So he used to give me the cold shoulder. He used to treat me. You know, I would stay out his way when you know. Ever since he had got mad, since I was uh, cracking jokes or playing, something I did to him, he was upset. But. um He'll do a little, like, what's up, you know, a little something, but he's act a little funny with me, right? So, like, this 1990 now, 1991, once I had got it, once I had uh, broke out the place, I'm in the Magnolia. On Magnolia, I'm on Magnolia and Belmont, third floor. So, happening, I'm downstairs sitting on the porch, just, you know, catching me a breather, you know, just chilling. Yeah, he come around the curve, around the building. The T, I was T back then. T, what's up? Man, you know got something? What you looking for? Man, I'm trying to get me an eight ball. Oh, yeah, how much you got? He had like 130, 140, something like that. Something like that. I said, give me that, man. He gave me the money. The boy gave me the money. This is the same guy that I was in juvenile jail with just about a year ago who want to fight me and who's to act all, you know, snobby with me. Just put a hundred and thirty something or a hundred and forty dollars in my hand. This man put this money in my hand. So I, I politely walked up the steps. He don't know what house I went in, so apartment I mean I went in, so I went in the apartment, locked the door, and, and went out the back door, went up the long driveway, Hit that right on Claro and ducked off on Claro. It's a six and Claro, no, yeah, six and Claro, upstairs, third floor, right side. For those out that know, y'all know what I'm talking about. That where all the choppers and everything used to be at. I'm gonna duck off up there, hundred something dollars richer for this fool here. How he treated me in juvenile jail. Now I don't give a twist. He ain't put his hand on me or do nothing disrespectful or nothing. It's just the fact that how he was all, you know, snobby and stuff towards me. And I just wanted to kick it, hang out and clown around. But he got mad. I guess I got the best on with the cracking the jokes or whatever. And he wanted to fight. Then from there, he just, you know, with the little snobby look. Cool. Then, we was in a stolen car. We go across Claiborne. I didn't much know there was this set, right? So we had came around. Come up the street, I see some dudes sitting on the porch. And I spotted him. I said, oh, he uh, he need no more. So I, I just jacked him out something a while ago. I don't forget how long ago it was, but it was like a week, ago, a week or two ago. And now he's sitting on the porch. I said, well, he might have read up by now. He might have got some money or got something. We come back around soon, we pull up to jump out. They just took all. All of them got away. We didn't get a chance to jack 
one of them. They all got away. Man, had to be about five, six of them boys on the porch just chilling. Right across Claiborne, right behind where, uh, where that's Claiborne, where right behind is General Taylor. Claiborne, I mean, uh, not Claiborne, uh, General Taylor. Claiborne, General Taylor, then go down General Taylor and come back on that little back street, right back there. For those, for the end of y'all know, y'all know what I'm talking about, that right out, right behind the parkway. Block over or two from the parkway. That's where his hood was at, right back up in there somewhere. He jumped out that car and that boy, the feet don't feel me now. Pew, was gone. Got away from him. And I always wondered why he never came in that know you looking for me or came back, you know, to get some get back. So right after that happened, that, that mission failed, I'm ticked off, right? So now I'm in a project on the old side and I see uh, a partner of mine actually go robbing where he in jail at this time. His big brother coming to Project the Scope. What you getting? Sam Graham? Yeah. But he already had the guy that in cuffs trying to lie to tell me. He tried to lie to tell, tell me that he was waiting to get it. And this was this is this ain't seen right. It ain't sit right with me. Man, I had a big hard nine that 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 one that shoot eight times. That it's all steel. You could bust my give my concussion. You could just bust across the head with that thing. I had one of them. I upped him. He knew he was talking to me too. So I had to stand back a little bit. Man, why you like? Man, go ahead on T. And he tried to run. I called out brain, you know, you run behind a person and you kick that feet, and his big tall goofy self fell. And I said, Man, man come he was balled up. Man, where is that? He went in his underwear and produced a little powder quarter for me. I said, look how he lied. He chomped. Took the little quarter. Man, come on, man, you know you and my brother cool. Man, your brother in jail right now. Yeah, you're right, man. Your brother cool, but me and you not cool. I, listen, y'all, I know y'all remember that, man. You down, you down bad, but listen. I had him broke out of juvenile jail. I had, this was in 1991. I wasn't uh, due to get out until 1996. So I had to get it how I live, because ain't no telling when I'm going back to juvenile jail. So I got to have my story together like I'm having right now for you all. You know, in jail, you got to, oh, y'all was out there. I had this girl, this girl was sweat. You know how we do in jail? We go to brag about what we did. So I had to hit as many licks as I can so I could be a little, you know what I'm saying, juvenile rich. So, yeah, I caught him slipping, and he tried to throw his brother in my face. But his brother had, like, some Buck Rogers numbers. His brother going to be a long time before he get out of jail. So I, I ain't kidding about him no more. That's darn bad, huh? Yeah, I know. But anyway, his brother deceased now, though. But uh, he had a bad, he got a pretty sister, too, now I think about it. I, I looked in the window, and I called, uh, I ain't going to say his dad, I called one of my partners. Uh, humping his sister. Bang! I, I climbed on the third floor, reached over the window and slide and look over. Man, work call. You hear me? Man, listen. It's cold out here night. I was early morning. I got to get ready to get, get ready to get, get ready to clock out. Got to get ready to go. And I just want to stop by, holler at y'all. Now, be on the lookout for that nonprofit. They need us. Y'all know the motto. Say no to drug. Stop the violence. Put these guns down. The street times is average youth. That's helping people out. People need our help in these shelters too, man. Um, um, you know, a lot of y'all gonna be spending money for these holiday season, man. If you got a few dollars, if you know, five, ten dollars, get on my. Uh, I got a, uh, the my Instagram is they need us third ward. We got the cash app on there. Uh, whatever you donate. Uh, so whatever we when we uh, buy something for the people in the shelter, wherever we buy something. For people at, we would let you know how what we spend, where your money, where everything go. I ain't trying to pocket none of your money. I just want to help the people, man. That's all. Just want to help the people out. Thank y'all for hanging out. Make sure you all support my uh my my, my app that's on Roku, uh, Terrence Gates the William Network. Make sure y'all support that. Download it to your TV if you don't have it on there already, because you know what I'm saying it's going down. That's what I'm, I'm out here making a few moves. And make sure you all support my book. I wrote this book back in 2002 or 2003. Then when I ran across my Muslim brother in 04, 05 in USP McQuarrie somewhere, he edited the book and added some words and helped me out with the book. So I found it in my box. I was like, you know what, let me, let me see if people like this. So, so far, a lot of people been showing up to uh, check out, check it out. You know, we're on chapter three right now. And uh, go away, we're going to check for tonight for you guys. So y'all check that out. Like I say, thank you all for hanging out with me. I'm out.
ว่า